Got it? Okay. And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? The spirit of Occupy is becoming contagious all the way to the voting booth. In Ohio, issue number two, which would have solidified that fascist Tea Party Coke brother puppet Governor Kasich's gutting of state employees' ability to bargain with a union, not just got a no vote, over 60% voted no. In Maine, the Tea Party governor gutting same-day voter registration was a key way to get a lot of people to vote, and they don't want people to vote on that side, of course. Again, over 60% said same-day registration comes back. Mississippi, almost 60% voted against a really insane abortion law saying that conception and personhood begins with the very fertilized egg, so even if you have to throw out a test tube baby, you've committed murder, and it banned use of the pill, banned use of IUDs, banned use of in vitro fertilization, and that any miscarriages, as if the prospective mother hasn't been traumatized physically and mentally enough, should be investigated for criminal wrongdoing. Voted down, even in Mississippi, in spite of the support of that noted moderate Willard Mitt Romney. In Arizona, the state Senate leader Russell Pierce, who wrote that horrible anti-immigration law, recalled from office. San Francisco, an attempt by a guy who claims he represents my district, but he sure as hell doesn't represent me, appropriately named Wiener. The Wiener Law would have meant that any political ballot initiatives passed by the voters, the board could just change them, thus nullifying the power of the vote. That lost by over 60% as well, and in North Carolina, a Tea Party-controlled school board that ended integration got kicked out. Very important victories. I'm into insurrection in the street, with our money, and in the voting booth. You don't get that much change without all of them. And in the streets, hey, even banks learned last Saturday on November 5th, they too can be boycotted. So how about taking that boycott first, further, and urging cities and even states to start their own bank? Municipal bank, state bank like North Dakota has, instead of paying all those millions and even billions of banking fees to Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, and the others. They don't deserve them. Start your own bank and you can give lower cost, lower interest rate loans to people of lesser income and small businesses. And now, even the very possibility of general strike hit the mainstream media when people did it in Oakland. The whole city couldn't go out on strike, but enough people did that people are starting to scratch their heads and say, hey, this has happened during the Depression before. It even happened in Oakland again in 1946. Why not? Next day, November 6th, Occupy in D.C. goes to Occupy the Treasury, and this time a specific demand, a transaction tax, like so many people have suggested, Europe is hopefully about to pass, and we used to have in this country in 1966, tiny little tax on all the stock transactions and money overseas, which would do way more to balance the budget quickly than simply kicking everybody off welfare and not letting them go to school anymore. I like demands. Demands are good. I like the fact that the people who occupied the Capitol in Wisconsin when Governor Walker went ballistic on union rights and other things, they took that back into the trenches, got some of those state senators recalled, and I never thought I'd give money to Democrats again, but yes, I gave money to the Wisconsin Democratic Party for their recall Governor Scott Walker campaign. That's going to be a big one next year. And this is especially important to start thinking beyond the occupying tents right when a new round of attacks on the actual camps are being planned by mayors, chamber of commerce, and police. And then, what is the cop's best friend to get rid of an occupation or sit in? Cold, snowy, rainy winter. Not everybody is going to last that long. And people say they're in it for as long as it takes. This isn't going to happen as quickly as Arab Spring. What does in it for as long as it takes really mean? Watch out for burnout. It's okay for people who are in it for as long as it takes to step back for a minute, recharge your batteries, and then come back with renewed energy, vigor, and strength. I mean, I don't want to see it happen like what happened to Cindy Sheehan, 
when she took such a courageous stand against Bush's Iraq war that killed her son, camped out in front of his ranch, and suddenly she was supposed to be the leader of the anti-war movement. Everybody dumped work on her, tugged her in different directions. She puts out a press release saying she's resigning from the anti-war movement. What she really needed to do was just take a break, get her real life back, maybe sleep in her own bed and see her family, things like that. And once she did that, sure enough, thankfully, she came back. What we need is more like tag team wrestling. You know, right when one somebody looks like they're going to get pinned in the ring, they slap somebody and somebody else comes in and the team keeps going. Recharging your batteries is not selling out, wimping out, or betraying the movement. It's what makes you human. So, the insurrection, street, money, boycotts, voting booths, even occupying the entrances to corporate predator chain stores. But, uh, but then where do we go from there? Especially voting is, pr is important even if you can't stand the cartoon characters chosen by the 1% for president, senator, governor, whatever. Local elections are where it's at. Hardly anybody pays attention to them, which means people like us have a better chance of getting good people in and important ballot initiatives like rent control, medical marijuana, voting down sports stadiums and golf courses and you know, spending the city money fixing the streets to widen the avenue to Walmart while they close the library like they tried to do in Ukiah, California. This is why that's important. There may never be consensus at the Occupy General meetings on a lot of things, but bulletin boards with people just throwing up ideas, this is what we want, is the first step to making it possible. Which brings us to the question, since the corporate media is saying, oh, yay, finally, the Democrats have their own Tea Party. It's already twice as popular, with only a minuscule amount of people actually in the tents. Well, I hope some of them realize this is in, against corporate Democrats as much or more than it is Republicans. So, do we occupy the Democrats now? I don't know. I'm of two minds. I'm registered green. I don't really want to re-register Democrat. But then there's a temptation that, look at all the Tea Party people who shifted to the debate, debate further to the right just by running in primaries for Congress, Senate, and unfortunately a lot of them who ran for state legislatures won because people like us weren't paying enough attention. At the very least, you shift the debate, you uh, meet some very interesting people too, and uh, it's better than having the corporate Democrats come back down and saying, here, all you get is Tweedle Clinton and Tweedle Barack star or whatever, or you have no choice. You better come with us. We don't want that anymore. And so basically, Barry Goldwater was laughed at and considered dangerous when he lost to Lyndon Johnson in 64, but his, event, his arguments eventually became the new normal. Now they've shifted this whole austerity illusion, like that's the only choice, as the new normal. And it's about time all the tails began wagging the dog while the austerity Nazis and the 1% banksters are Michael Vicking the dog. So, I don't know what the deadlines are for filing in some of these congressional primaries and things, but for somebody out there, it's worth thinking about. After all, as a Green Party friend of mine who does hold office in Berkeley told me a few days ago, to have political power, you actually have to have political power.